right. Well, good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. On this Pentecost Sunday, we're a little bit early, which is amazing for me. <laughs> but don't you worry, I'll take up the time. One of the reasons we have traditions, church traditions, is because people like you show up year after year and keep the traditions. It also really helps if we know why we're keeping the traditions. Like why I'm wearing my fancy red seersucker pants, huh? Why Miss Pat is wearing her red jacket, pretty as it is, and Amy and Joyce and all the rest. Red is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And this day is called Pentecost Day, as so many of you know, which is the symbol day that we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the fact is this, Pentecost is not a new thing in the New Testament. Pentecost, a little Sunday school, but just going to take a minute. Pentecost has its roots and its origin in the Old Testament. You with me? So, you're, so here's your Pentecost crash course, which will get us all present in the room today. In the Old Testament, as the story goes, the Israelites, the children of God, were held captives in slavery in Egypt under the thumb of a man whose name starts with a P. It is Pharaoh. On Passover, in the Old Testament story, the Israelites were sprung from Pharaoh's trap by a famous man whose name starts with an M, Moses. Moses sprung the Israelites from Pharaoh's trap on Passover. They go into the wilderness, parting of the Red Sea, that whole bit. Are we together? Fifty days after they were sprung from Pharaoh's trap, Moses goes up a mountain called Sinai. Amen? He gets the gift of the law in the tablets called the Ten Commandments and Torah. Yes, very good. Advanced student right here. That's 50 days after Passover. The Greek word for 50 is, starts with a P, Pentecost. It's just that simple. Now, the gift of the law on the 50th day after the Passover was given to the people not to keep them in line, but rather to keep them in relationship with God. Does that make sense? To collapse the distance between them and God. Follow these love-based rules. This is the gift of the law. Does that make sense? Fast forward about 1,300 years, give or take. Jesus comes on the scene. On the eve of Passover, Jesus is killed. And then he rises from the dead Easter. Right? Do you know what happens 40 days after Easter, uh, Jesus rises from the dead? Say it, Joyce. Ascension. He ascends into heaven. Right before he ascends into heaven, he tells the disciples, hey, y'all hang around. In the city, something cool is going to happen. Ten days after the ascension is Pentecost. Somebody tell me what 40 plus 10 is. 50. Somebody tell me what Pentecost means. 50. The cool thing that happened was those flames or tongues of fire that appeared above the disciples' head. We're going to hear it read about in the book of Acts, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples and to all of us to collapse the distance between us and God. To say no way to the original lie that there's any distance between us and God that was told to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Holy Spirit, says Jesus, is with you and inside your body. Y'all, that's Pentecost. That's what we're about today. Pentecost Day. So... It's a baptismal day, which means we do children's chapel a little early today, and y'all are going to be back for the baptism. And Patty, no pressure, but one of the kids you're going to have is going to be baptized. So, you're, so Patty's definitely going to bring them back for the baptism. So any children in our midst who wish to go to children's chapel can come forward here right now, meet Miss Patty, and head off to children's chapel, and come to me and we'll say a prayer before you go. All right, what a crowd. I love it. Here's Dr. Wendy. All right. 
All right, gang. So let's say a prayer and then y'all can be on your way. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all have fun. We'll see you at the baptism. Now, congregation, if you'll turn in your hymnals to him. 48. Stand as you're able. We will sing together. Service continues on page 299. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord, is risen there is one body and one spirit. There is one, Lord, one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and suns on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm, Psalm 104, can be found on page 736 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, page 736 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say in unison Psalm 104, verses 35, 25 to 35 and 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth 
and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these, t these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. (laughs) 
You thought that first piece was a sermon, didn't you? You thought, well, he's changed the order. I got two. I got two this morning. Now, that was Sunday school. So if somebody said to me, what's the Bible about? You got one sentence. In one sentence, what's the Bible about? This is what I'd say. The Bible is the collected stories of God's desire for a personal relationship with you and you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, all of us. The collected stories of God's desire for a personal relationship with you. It starts with a personal relationship, the Bible does. Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve are the archetypal stand-ins for everybody. You are Adam. You are Eve. And in the early days of their story, they are in love. Oh, they're in love with each other, and they're in love with God, and God with them, and they're in love with all the earth. And then, darn it, they get tangled up with a snake. Ah! And this snake has one point and purpose. This snake wants to break up Adam and Eve and God, like a middle schooler telling stories in the halls. The snake just wants to break them all up. So the snake, therefore, is a symbol for anything that comes between you and God. Can you think of the snakes you've got in your life right now? Don't say them out loud, please, Jesus. The snake is whatever tells you the lie that God doesn't love you just as you are, thereby creating distance between you and God. Are we together? So here's how the story unfolds. After they encounter the snake, one evening after supper, when a nice breeze was blowing through Eden, God went out for a walk. And he usually walked with Adam and Eve after supper, so he called out to them because he didn't see them around. And when God called out to Adam and Eve, they hid. Adam and Eve hid from God. And they hid because the lie that the snake told them I'm going to say it, made them feel naked. Or as we say down in my home state of Georgia, naked. And their nakedness, ah, I got Jan Clark on my side here. Their nakedness is a metaphor for anything that makes them feel less than. Wait, too tall, too short, too thin, too fat, too smart, not smart enough, too poor, too young, too old. What makes you feel less than? That's your nakedness. Now remember, God created Adam and Eve because God really wanted to be in relationship with them. That was his heart's desire. So when they said to God, we're hiding from you because we're naked, you know what happened to God? It's a true story. God's heart broke. God's heart broke broke. And then God said the saddest line in the entire Bible. Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were less than in any way? That is God's great lament, you see. That any of us, any of us Adams or any of us Eves would ever feel like can't, God can't and doesn't love us just as we are. Who told you that you were naked? And this is the story of the lie the snake told about the distance between Adam and Eve and God. There's another story about another child of God who's naked. 
Fast forward to the gospel. Can y'all do that? So that's Old Testament story, right? Fast forward to the gospel. Jesus is on the scene. There's a story of a man who didn't let distance come between him and God. There's a story of a man who didn't buy the lie. So check this out. Here's the story. Jesus has been working really, really hard, you know, doing stuff he does, feeding thousands and thousands of people, healing people, raising people up from the dead, preaching, teaching, taking on the church folks in his way. He's been working really hard. He's tired. It's time for a break. This is a true story. So Jesus gets into a boat to take a ride with his disciples. That's relaxing, right? Hey, y'all want to go to a boat ride? It's been a long week. Jesus was beat. And so when he got in the boat and they got underway, he pretty quickly fell asleep. So he's asleep in the boat while they row across the lake. And when they got all the way across, he'd had a good nap, right? They reached the shore. I guess the boat sort of bounces up on the sand and Jesus wakes up. Jesus opens his eyes, he stretches his arms wide above his head, and he yawns like we do when we wake up sometimes. That was a good nap. Then he smiles, and he steps out of the boat onto land. Y'all know this story? As soon as my man's feet hit the sand, another man rushes up to him. I mean, the scripture says rushes up to him, like runs, like full-grown man just runs right up to Jesus right as he gets out of the boat. It's a little unsettling, to say the least, because the man seemed to have come from out of nowhere. Like they said, like, where was that guy? I didn't even even see him coming. Did you? No, I didn't see him. It was doubly unsettling. Do you know this, Joyce? It was doubly unsettling. No, check this out. Because the man, (laughs) he didn't have any clothes on. No, no, that's a true story. This is in the scripture. The man didn't have a stitch of clothing on. He's totally naked. It gets worse. How could it get worse? It gets worse. The story goes that the man fell down at Jesus' feet. All right, so now we got a naked man kneeling at Jesus' feet. His head are on the tips of Jesus' toes. That's how close he is. Later, folks told Jesus, they said, man, oh. They said, Jesus, this cat has not worn clothes for a very long time. That's a direct quote from scripture. (laughs) They also told him that he lived in the cemetery outside among the graves. The guy was totally cut off, totally alone, totally isolated. Distance between him and everybody else. And they further told Jesus the man was demon possessed. You know what Jesus did? Hmm? Jesus spoke to the man. He didn't run away. He didn't say, get off my toes. He didn't say, put on some clothes. He said to the man, brother, you belong to God, not those demons. That's what he said. You know what the man did then? He shouted. He shouted at the top of his lungs at Jesus. He shouted, what do you want from me, Jesus? Don't you mess with me, Jesus shouted that from the ground, no clothes on, kneeling on Jesus' feet. That was kind of a strange thing to say, but it didn't bother Jesus. Jesus very calmly said to that man, most amazing thing, he said, brother, what is your name? Will you tell me your name? That's what Jesus said to him. Now think about that. What is your name? Is that not the most gentle? Hey, brother, tell me your name. Beautiful way to remind somebody that they are not alone. To collapse the distance between you and the other. Like, tell me your steward. Boom, we're together. Right? Betty, boom, we're together. My name's Hendry. Then you're not cut off, right? You're not anonymous anymore. Tell me your name. I know your name. You are Joyce. You know what the man said when Jesus said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. And at first I thought that was kind of a weird name, but then I remembered my name is Hendry, and that's a really weird name. (laughs) Neither of those names really bothered Jesus all that much. Didn't bother him at all. 
He stayed with that man who called himself Legion. He hung with that man until that man calmed down. You ever need somebody to hang with you till you calm down? Maybe I do. Then you know what, when he got calmed down, you know what Jesus did? He got him some clothes. He got him some clothes, y'all. Do you know what God did with Adam and Eve just as soon as they left the Garden of Eden? He got them some clothes. Dignity. Then Jesus cast out those demons. Huh? Now he casts those demons out. Some people, when we start talking about demons in the church, like, ah. It's like, that's where we part. It's like, ah, oh, it's a little embarrassing. Now the priest is talking about demons. Why did Jesus have to talk about demons? That sounds strange and outdated to some people. You know, it doesn't sound strange to me. Do y'all know about demons? Hmm? Boy, I do. You know about having something inside of you? <laughs> you ever had a panic attack? Don't raise your hands. You ever had a panic attack? You don't have to raise your hands. You ever, have you ever had a panic attack? I have. You ever been, or maybe you haven't had a panic attack, but you've been overwhelmed, like from the inside out. You ever been overwhelmed with anxiety? Like something's got a hold of you from inside? You know what happens if you haven't? Here's what happens. You have a panic attack or get really just anxious in an acute way. You breathe real shallow. Like, like from here up, just breathe. <laughs> your heart goes really, really fast. It just races. And you're pretty sure you're going to pass out or die, maybe both, just in sequential order. You feel possessed, don't you? Huh? You feel like something's got a hold of you from the inside. Like, like, like it's squeezing you really tight from the inside. Like what has got my heart? What is pushing the air out of my lungs? And don't you, you know this? You feel separate, don't you? Like from your surroundings and from God. And you feel all alone when you get overwhelmed from the inside out. Like everything depends on you, but you're not up to it. What is this isolation, this distance? That's the demon, y'all. I mean, that's the, that's the metaphor of the demon. Come on. Then you know what you know what you know what brings you out of that. Somebody hangs with you. Somebody just stays with you. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Like Jesus did with that man. Somebody just stays with you. Maybe it's somebody who loves you, who's not having a panic attack. Maybe maybe they come up to you, put their hand gently on your back, maybe. Maybe they say something like, hey, hey, it's okay. Like, hey, Alice. Like, hey, 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 Ryan. Hey, hey, Alan. It's okay. Breathe. And maybe they say that, breathe. Come on, get down in your belly. Maybe they say, get down in your belly. Breathe down. Put your hands on your belly. Breathe down into your belly. Then they, maybe they say something like, I'm here with you. Like, I ain't going anywhere. Nothing to be afraid of in this moment, they might say to you, when you're having a, an attack of this sort, like breathe. And then they'll say, well, that, that, that's better. There you are. Then they say your name again. Hey, Amy. Yeah, Joyce. Then they say something like, like Jesus said, how about we get you some clothes, brother? But maybe you're clothed during your panic attack. So, so they say like, hey, how about a glass of water? And that sounds like the best thing you've ever heard in your life. Like, you would get me a glass of water? Do you? And then they say, hey, why don't you tell me what's going on? What's bothering you? And the next thing you know, are y'all with me? Next thing you know, the demon has been exercised. Next thing you know, you're gathered back together and the panic is gone and your breathing is normal and your heart's back in your chest and you can just sit there and you can talk or maybe you don't talk. Maybe you just rock in a rocking chair in the breeze on your back porch. Whatever the case, the isolation is over. It's a miracle. You're back. So when they talk about demons in the gospel, I don't think it's weird. I know exactly what they're talking about. So in the very next scene with that man, can y'all go back to the man that Jesus is with? In the very next scene, the man has clothes on. And he and this is a true story. He and Jesus are sitting together like they're cross-legged on the sand. They are sitting together and they're just talking like just like me and you would talk. And they're smiling and there's even a little bit of laughter. And everybody who knows the man is amazed. Where'd he get those clothes? I thought he was crazy. And the man wants to go with Jesus. He said, Jesus, can I go with you? This has meant so much to me. You've saved my life. Can I go with you? And you know what Jesus says to him? Jesus says, no. 
He says, no, brother. He said, baby, you stay here. I want you to stay here, he says to the man, and I want you to tell people about God. He says, I want you to tell everybody who comes across this way here what love is done with you. What love is done with you. And then Jesus leaves. But the Holy Spirit, somebody said it's Pentecost, the Holy Spirit stays. The Holy Spirit is the love current of God that connects all things. The Holy Spirit connecting God and this man stays with the man. The Holy Spirit stays inside of the man. The man is now still possessed. But he's possessed by love. Did y'all see what we just did there? And this is the flow. This love possession. This is the flow that we are all baptized into. This is the flow that reminds us daily that there is no nakedness we need hide from God. This is the flow of God's love that reminds us daily that there is no darkness that Jesus will not meet us in. The flow that reminds us that we are never, ever, ever alone. And so we're about to baptize a couple of little ones. And I want you to know that to be baptized is to be possessed by the living current of God's love, namely the Holy Spirit. And this is the most important thing because you remember where we started. God's deep desire is to have a personal relationship with you and you and you and you. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of that desire. It is likewise the fulfillment of Jesus' promise not to leave us orphaned. You see, the Holy Spirit is all around us, is deep within us. Forever and ever. And ever, amen. And that is the meaning of Pentecost. So if the parents, the godparents, and the families of the two candidates, after all of that, still want in on this baptismal way of life, this flow of love, and y'all are up for it, I say we baptize these babies. Amen. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. So congregation, we are on page 301, and you're, you can stand there, that's great. Yeah, you can stand there. All right. Let's see. We're missing one. Here he comes. He's doing great. All right, yeah, you're right here. So if you'll step right there, perfect. There's the talent, yes. Little Ryan. All right. So we got parents, candidates, godparents. People have prayer books. Father John, will you grab some prayer books for these? Oh, oh there you go. Let's get one more, yeah. Yeah, Misty, why don't you get there? Thank you so much. Good. All right. So page 301. And we'll go one at a time with each family presenting the one to be baptized on the bottom of 301. 
and I'm going to count you in. I'm going to say three, two, one, and then all together you're going to read this line, putting Alice's name in there, and then y'all will follow suit, and I'll count you in. Y'all ready? All right, three, two, one. Perfect. Three, two, one. Perfect. Turn the page, top of 302. I have a couple of questions for you. You'll all answer together. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Excellent. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Very good. A few more questions. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? All right. Congregation, we're on the bottom of page 303. Wonderful and well-equipped as these parents and godparents are, they cannot do it alone. They need your help. So I invite you to stand as you're able, and I have a question for you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us then join with them who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, saints the, the forgiveness of sins, sins the, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver Ryan and Alice, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill Alice and Ryan with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send Alice and Ryan into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. And bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. 
Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Alice, you're the oldest, so you go first. I need you to help me. Can you put your hands in here? There you go. Can you help me? Can you put your... There you go. Alice, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, you do it the last time. Amen. Amen. Good job. Alice, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Father John, you, you take that sleeping baby and your oil stock's right here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them inquiring and discerning hearts, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. And now let us welcome the newly baptized, saying together, We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may greet one another. Peace. Congratulations, all. Peace. Perfect, Alice. That was so good. That was so good. So good. So, Alice, will you wait for us? Yeah. So, Alice is going to lead us to the back of the church so you all can see these newly baptized. So, this is Alice. Alice, these are your people. And this is Ryan. We're trying to get Ryan to calm down. And big brother Vincent. Oh, he's precious. Precious. Can you lead us back up to the front? What do you think about that baby? Mercy. This is Ryan. Say hello. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. All right. Right. 
So if my math is right, might not be, but it might be, that was 12 baptisms in Easter season. 12's a good, yeah, 12's a good uh, gospel number, isn't it? 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Israel. So there it is, Pentecost Day. So forever, ever not, forever and ever, amen, Alice and Ryan, Pentecost Day will be the anniversary of your baptism. What a day, what a day. So a couple of other things to draw your attention to in the life of the church. First is, a special welcome to any newcomers or guests that we have in our midst today. If you're in the room with us, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're joining us online, welcome, welcome, welcome. In either case, we'd love to have you fill out a connection card. If you're in the room, there's a little connection card in the pew back in front of you. You can write your name on it, your contact information. If you're online, I think Emory is putting up the connection card right now in the stream. He is. That enables us to do what we love to do best, which is connect with you and discover together how God might be calling you deeper into the fellowship of this good parish. I always say, it's, if you're looking for a church, today is the day I've got good news for you. Your search is over. You found your church. Good Shepherd is the place to be. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Another thing to draw your attention to is an organization, a women's organization of the church called Daughters of the King. The Daughters of the King is a fabulous women's organization which seeks to which has women that seek to order their life around two things prayer and service very simple very vital i'm a little biased but we have the biggest and the best and the most holy chapter of the daughters of the king and the entire church at good shepherd church. i don't think i'm supposed to say that but i did anyway if you want to, if women of the church sorry men if you want to join our chapter or just learn about what it might be like to join our chapter. The Daughters of the King are having a meet and greet after this service in the Undercroft, which is right below us. So you can just go down the stairs in the back of the room there in the bell tower, meet and greet in the Undercroft right after this service. Amy and others have assured me you can go and check it out and you don't have to join. You can just go check it out and see what's up. You might want to join, you might not. Women of the church, all are invited after this service in the Undercroft. I'm also aware, Dr. Middleton, that we have an even song uh, next Sunday at 3 p.m. We do a choral even song once a quarter-ish, and our next one is June 12th, next Sunday at 3 p.m. You're all invited. I'm also aware, Emory Booterball, that Theology on Tap, which is a small group which meets on Tuesday nights, is meeting this week for the first time in two years in person. So pandemic has kept this group, this small group, online. So this Tuesday is at 7 p.m. Emory at Mirror Twin, which is a pizza joint, kind of a few neighborhood blocks over. 7 p.m. Go to the website, check it out. The topic this Tuesday is what is a Christian? So just a small question for people to mull over. What is a Christian? Go have pizza, have a cold drink with Emory and Theology on Tap Friends this Tuesday, 7 p.m. All are welcome. I think that's it. One apology to make. We spelled Ryan Shepard's last name wrong in the bulletin, and that's on me. I'm supposed to be a good proofreader, and sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. So one of our baptismal candidates, little Ryan, who slept through it all, we spelled his name wrong in the bulletin. So my public apologies for that. It's spelled right everywhere else. Praise God. So one more thing before the announcements. Um, I mean, the birthday prayer. There are a lot of steps in our church, and for three Sundays in a row, we've had folks come up to communion and trip. And so my new public service announcement is, everyone watch the steps. I've fallen, you can fall too. It's an equal opportunity to fall. I want to tell you that the worst step in the entire campus is right here. For three Sundays in a row, folks have tripped, and I don't want you to trip. So I'm making a big, goofy deal of it. So when you come up for communion, you have to look down and not trip on this step right here. It's the worst step in all of Christendom. Don't trip on it. Am I making my point? Amen? Don't trip on this step. If you think there is any chance that you're going to trip, you meet Father John right here. Yeah, don't do that. If there's any chance you're going to trip, I think I got their attention now. Any chance you're going to trip, my wife's going to leave me today. Y'all know that, don't you? <laughs> She's going to change churches. She's a Baptist now. Any chance you're going to trip, any chance you're going to trip, you meet Father John on the floor. 
His communion is just as good as the communion up there. Do not trip. We good? It's our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving upon anyone who is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. Please come forward and deliver us. <laughs> birthday, couple of birthdays. Lots of birthdays, nice. All right, congregation, you have the birthday prayer in the back of your prayer books. Yeah. So we will pray it together saying, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, here are your sons and your beloved daughters gathered in this your church celebrating the anniversary of their births. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. Yeah.
Service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
congregation, would you please join me inside the cover of your book or on the back cover, the sending forth of Eucharistic visitors. In the name of this congregation, we send you out bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. God bless you. Thank you. Post-communion prayer is on page 365. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.